Uh, welcome back. I, I just got off the phone with Insomniac, and they said they're going to hit you up, Caboose. So, oh, great, yeah, uh, great. They're they're called. <laughs> okay. uh, but for now, we're going to actually have to discuss another PlayStation exclusive. I feel like that's all this day has been. A oh, Ghost of Tsushima uh, uh, Legends, the new DLC for obviously Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah, Tsushima. <laughs> Gosh, uh, okay. you got there. It's a case of the Mondays, but uh, let's get a case of Ghost because uh, Malik has all the details. Yeah, so I spent my weekend just completely absorbed by Ghost of Tsushima Legend. It is far better than I thought it could be. I, it was better than I expected it to be. I, I really wanted it just to be a cool little side co-op and be happy with that. What they decided to do was go full Call of Duty zombies mixed with <laughs> Destiny's survival raids, throw in some samurai action. Oh, it's just amazing. You, there's four classes. There's the Ronin, the Samurai, the Hunter, and the Assassin. Uh, each one has their own perks. Uh, they have their own skill trees. Um, you get a whole bunch of different loot. There's like rarity levels. They really put the effort into making this the possibility of a long-standing MMORPG. Um, mm -hmm. when, you, when you look at it right now, it's pretty bare bones. Uh, it's the same four maps. There's one story, there's one story quest, which is five story missions. Um, but you can do each one of the survival maps and the story missions at either uh, bronze, silver, gold, or nightmare level. And they cap your skill at each level. You only get a certain level of gear uh, with each one. So in bronze, you can only get level 35 gear. And by the time you reach that level cap in that tier, you feel super powerful. You're just tearing apart all the enemies. It's a breeze. And then you go up a tier and it kicks your teeth in. It introduces new mm. enemy types. There's new puzzles. Um, the enemies get harder. They get smarter. It's really interesting. I've only gotten to gold. I'm excited to see how Nightmare is, but there's already people competing for the leaderboard to do the best in survival and to complete the Nightmare missions. Like with the highest score, it's insane. The community has blown up around this multiplayer. Uh, I don't, you guys said you haven't played it yet, but what are your thoughts on what you've seen so far? I'm dying to play it. I'm like <laughs> dying to play it. Um, yeah. yeah, I tried to find the time this weekend to play it. I just couldn't. <laughs> but man, everything that I've seen from this multiplayer looks so sweet. Yeah. I was watching a couple streams of it. It just looks awesome. And I, and I know they've promised that they're going to add like raids and stuff inevitably, yeah. right? That yeah. is so cool. I am all in. This is the game of the console generation. Also, Absolutely. you're saying that. That's when are they... What? Oh, anyway, <laughs> please, please. Uh, when are they? When are they going to announce that they're doing like a PS5 version? Is that not happening? Is this game strictly going to be backwards compatible? It yeah. might be strictly backwards compatible, which I I wouldn't mind because here's the thing. I would love to play Ghost of Tsushima in 4K 60 frames per second. Yeah, I would much rather have another legends expansion oh, next yes. year okay I, okay i think that ghost of tsushima is is so good that they don't really need to make another playstation 5 iteration i think legends is starting something that is going to carry the game for the next two years i hope and so that's that's just me being truthfully honest because the story alone was a beautiful 40-hour experience legends is looking to consume hundreds of hours of my life it Holy it crap. kind of it, it <laughs> is that destiny scratch where you know where you jump in with your friends Damn. and you compete in raids and you earn gear it's it is addicting earning the gear because you yeah. can you can re-roll your gear so let's say that you get a purple like level katana and it's only a level 50 but you're at level 80 now you can re-roll that so it goes up to level 80, but you lose all the, all the stats. So you have to re-roll the stats. So you get like this puzzle game built in of, okay, well, I'm going up against this enemy type. Mm. I need, you know, it works better if we assassinate them one by one, or it works better if we just keep them on fire. You know, poison works better for this. It's, it's crazy because I didn't think that Hunter was going to be viable because it's a, it's a bow and archer in a horde mode, essentially. Yeah. But they gave the hunter some of the best crowd control and clearing abilities in the game because they have explosive arrows 
and concussive arrow. So oh, cool. what they did was they made the hunter a glass cannon, which is like a warlock in any other MMO. They really did a good job of adhering to those MMO roles and adapting it to the game that they already had. And I can't remember who it was, but there was an interview um, with some of the staff and they were talking about how Ghost of Tsushima Legends was always going to be a part of the game. It was always going to be half of the Ghost of Tsushima world. They just wanted to make sure people liked the game and that the base game felt good before yeah. they experimented with that. And, and I, they've yeah. done a great job. Go ahead. Sorry. No, I'm sorry for cutting you off. But um, And I think their priority definitely had to be um, the core main story game. When you're thinking mm. of a PlayStation exclusive, you're thinking of the story. So in yeah. order to adhere to those commitments of being a PlayStation exclusive, they need to have their story intact. But it's great to know that they always knew Legends would be a thing. So you knew whatever they implemented in the core game would help branch into and transition players into legends now i know arkham red in chat said no ghost of tsushima playstation 5 remaster um i figured that would be a top thing i, I think you're on to something malik i think mm -hmm. getting more legends would be and having that backwards compatibility is the main thing until they have ghost of tsushima 2 the story arc right. to kind of lead into a new legends and that's catered for playstation 5 and that will probably be you know four or five years down the road if <laughs> right. we see it, right? Um, but I, I think Legends is so interesting because you mentioned the comparison to Destiny. The thing that I had the issue with Destiny, it just got so stale very, very quickly. Yeah. But I feel like how- I think you meant to say Death Stranding. <laughs> <laughs> No, I love this thing. Um, no, but it got so stale quickly for me. And one of those things was just the balancing in terms of um, how you are on raids with your friends or how you're playing with your friends, especially because I cover a lot of games for my job. So I don't have as much hours to put into another game other than Call of Duty because that's usually my core game where I'm leveling up and ranking in, right? So right. I want to know from you specifically, how does um, playing with friends of different levels work in Legends? Do you think it's well balanced? It's, it is. So this is actually something I wanted to bring up. So me and my closest friend, we're both level 80. And then we have another friend who's level 50. And then we have another friend who started last night and he was brand new. We could only do the bronze level survival stuff. We were still getting our teeth kicked in at bronze. It has, I'm not, I can't confirm this, but it does feel like if you are a higher level helping out a lower level person, they still scale it to kind of find a, a middle ground. It's almost like the yeah. game recognizes that there is a skill disparity and that you're trying to increase it. And I like that because it wasn't, I didn't feel bored helping my friend get, you know, leveled up. It, it was fun, it was new. And when you play, it, the matchmaking is there for a reason. Do not try to play any of these solo. Just go into a party with random people. It'll make your life so much easier. They may not go after the bonus objectives and they may not communicate with you. But when you do find a group that you can communicate with, starting to learn each other's styles and figuring out how everyone likes to play and what they like to use best. And then going into like with the raids and the nightmare mode, figuring out, okay, you like to use poison and I like to use assassin. So I'm going to use smoke bombs. So that way you can use poison to lower their defense and I can assassinate the boss in one hit. Mm. It's things like that okay. where it's not just playing with other people. It's starting to learn it, it's almost like a how do I play with other people and figuring mm. out what's the most effective way to play with certain groups. There's this level of unpredictability with Ghost of Tsushima Legends that I think is really what's going to carry it. Because when you go through the story missions too, there's bonus objectives, there's bonus chests that you can open that triggers like a boss wave where you have to clear out these bosses. It's randomized. The chests are in different locations every time you go through the story. They are, they spawn different types of bosses based on your skill level and, you know, where you're at. They, they did a really good job of randomizing it. So making sure that your experience with each person every time you go into a mission is different. And that's what I like because Ghost of Tsushima in the story, you kind of knew what you were getting, but it was also, it, 
I don't even know how to explain it. The story just felt good. It felt like yeah. it stood on its own and it had its own life. Uh, it was kind of like you were watching something that had already happened. Ghost of Tsushima Legends feels like you're going into this mystical realm where anything's going to happen and anything can happen, and I love that. They did a really good job of tying the story to the gameplay of the Legend. All right, guys, I'm going to go play. I got to go. Uh, <laughs> he's like, I'm out. <laughs> like, right now. I was thinking about it. I was, actually, I was actually thinking, okay, I need to get back to the PlayStation 4. Do I have friends? I need friends. Who wants to go <laughs> I will help carry anybody who needs it. I, I absolutely I love the game. <laughs> it's it's fun. And I think that like we talk about how we talked about previously how there are certain games that are going to change how you know games are played forever, introducing new features. And I think, and this is a bold statement, Ghost of Tsushima Ghost of Tsushima Legends is going to change how people look at MMORPGs like mm-hmm. Destiny forever. I think I that, ask it, that. Yeah, in comparison to them, where do you rank them? I think so when you when you have games like World of Warcraft, it's it's really hard to compare to that and I guess we'll talk about that later, but they they have these big story packs, you know, that come with it. And then when you look at Black Desert Online, the big kind of uh the big content drops comes in new heroes and characters and then like little events i think where goes to tsushima is going to shine is that they can provide a quality story and scale that on a in a way that will last people for 30 40 50 hours it's mm-hmm. that it's that way of scaling that they have it that really the the scaling and the unpredictability is what sets it apart from other games because in destiny i know exactly where i need to go exactly where i need to jump what kind of gun i need to have i know how to do the raids you know down to a t but in this we don't know how the raids are going to be yet but i have a feeling that they're going to keep that unpredictability level because they've already seen how it challenges people to to go in and be prepared. You can't just mindlessly run a raid. You have to be prepared. And also too, you're it's it's not shooting and it's not pressing a button to use skills. You have to have some sort of skill level in the sword combat to be successful in Ghost of Tsushima. You can't just, you know, level up an ability and use that ability to clear a mob. You have yeah. to at some point have good swordsmanship to be able to compete at the highest level and that's what i like there is a there is a very high skill cap involved so uh uh, feely i don't think we've asked you this question yet but i've asked caboose Mm -hmm. and malik if you were to play legends which legend would you want to be there's the ninja the ronin the hunter and what was the other one samurai samurai and samurai honestly I don't know. I usually go <laughs> like in solo plays. I usually go hunter or rogue because you can get away with anything. Like mm-hmm. hunter, you just kill from afar and you don't even stop. And rogue, you just like sneak past the mobs. But as it's more of an MMORPG, like the way Malik is selling it, because you're selling it, they should. I'm selling. <laughs> going to sell it. You're going to ghost. And, <laughs> Anyway, the way he's selling it is already sounding like World of Warcraft, Final Final Fantasy XIV. I mean, real MMORPGs, (laughs) like Guild Wars. Like, there's many, many rifts. I am, Mm -hmm. we can name them. But you have, when you said you you need to be prepared, I think it's the difference between RPGs and MMORPGs. You need, to be there more often on MMORPGs because you need to be prepared. You mm-hmm. need to farm your gear to get components. I don't know, food mm-hmm. or potions, enchantments. There's always some kind of grind you need to do every week. You don't log to play. You're logging <laughs> just to, to be ready to play. Like, right. And I think that's what Ghost of Tsushima is bringing is once again, they're most likely clothing the edge between styles because Caboose can play solo and kill people and log in one every, I don't know, 
a couple times a week. And Malik mm -hmm. can be spending all these nights on Legend. <laughs> and I think it's genius because yeah. you mm -hmm. share the same passion because when you both talk about it, we can feel you love the game. And right. Caboose mm -hmm. is saying it's the best game of the generation. So it's more like the it is. side of it. And Malik is just saying it's the best MMORPG. So, mm -hmm. I, it's, yeah, it's like two in one and it's awesome. And yeah, yeah. I would go probably Enter Samurai or something like that. Depends. Right. So I think there's space for you. Uh, Caboose, what was, who, was the, who was the character you called? Who was the legend you called? Samurai. Yeah. I'm a samurai. So as long as we're all going from samurai, we could play together. Um, but with that question, what kind of legend do you guys want to see come next to this DLC? Brute. I want a brute. Mm -hmm. I want, Ooh, I that want, would be awesome. I want someone that can use spears and claws. Yes. Because that yes. would be amazing. Like, make them low damage, but high stun potential. Because, look, when you... Sorry, I get... I love this game. <laughs> there's, there's shields and then there's health. And so you start to figure out certain status effects. Like flames negates shield and it'll just go after their health. Poison takes down their shield. If you have a brute whose only focus is to break down the shields and not do a lot of like damage, Elemental you could even, damage. Yeah. yeah, you could even have a club that's focused on shield damage and a spear that's focused on health damage. Like there are so many weapon types mm. in the game. There's so there's so much already in the game that they could draw from that yeah. just makes me want to keep playing and figure I, I'm excited to see what they're going to bring next because it doesn't feel like one class is super overpowered. They kind of need each other because an assassin can't uh as fully assassinate uh, a boss or a brute without taking down that shield first. So if you have a hunter that can poison them, take down the shield, then the assassin assassinates them, that works hand in hand. So it really, they stop any one class from feeling too powerful. The samurai is kind of like the, the general, like, good for everything, but I still think that they have the potential to add in super niche classes that yeah. do well. But would it cool. fit with the lore and environment? I didn't play it, uh, mm -hmm. as I said, but I don't... I don't see a kind of Japanese brute just making his way while everybody <laughs> else is sneaky, like you have right. the samurai, which is like that, and the ninja hiding, hunter. And then you get this big <laughs> hunter running yeah. around. Yeah. And I, I can't picture it. Like, I can see I if, if the brute was introduced as maybe like a. I'm watching, okay, I'm watching a lot of um, Inuyasha, the sequel to Inuyasha right now. Okay, <laughs> Yashi. Nice. Um, so, like, if you have a half demon, <laughs> yeah. like, character that's kind of a brute with, like, a mystical power to it would be really cool to be introduced mm. into Legends, especially because um, as we get introduced more into, like, the demons and, like, all the things you're battling in Tsushima, I feel it's just natural to want to be one of them mm. um, and play yeah. as one of them. So that would be really cool to see. Yeah, and I think there there's a couple moments in the story where, and I don't want to spoil anything, where people close to you turn. So I don't think it's unrealistic for them to introduce a, like, let's say that the next story mission that they introduce is all surrounded about a, a, a brute deserter from the yeah. Mongol army, you know? I think that they they could do something where they tie in a new class with a new story, and it doesn't fit the, it doesn't fit the theme in the story, like you would say. But I think Legends is, they're giving themselves that room to play around with things that don't necessarily fit in the story, but do fit, you know? And like you said, a brute could be controlled by, you know, a samurai demon, you know, or a samurai ghost. Like, they've possessed one of the Mongols. There's a lot of different liberties that they can take yes. with this. And also, too, they have all of Japanese mythology to work with. Exactly. That, that, is, that is the biggest mm -hmm. thing. They have no shortage of story. They, yeah. they could go on forever if they wanted to. It's just about picking the right ones and adapting it. And we could probably go on forever about Ghost of yeah. Tsushima, but we do have to move <laughs> to our final topic. <laughs> 